Uh, my name is Ted Huffines, and I am the District 5830 uh, International Service Chair. Um, I'm also a past district governor, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here today with you. I'm sorry I'm not in person. Uh, first off, would like to thank uh, District Governor-elect Karen Maines uh, for giving me the opportunity to share about international service. Uh, it's certainly something that I am uh, very interested about, very passionate about, and uh, and hope maybe that some of the things I'll say today will inspire you and your clubs to uh, to take part. Um, also, couldn't go by without saying thank you to Shirley Penix Evans uh, for her help uh, in so many ways, uh, past present and I hope in the future. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start off uh, just talking about international service. And you may sit there and you may say, why? You know, I know a lot of clubs um, are very passionate about doing things that they can see in their local communities. There's lots of needs. And uh, I would I would agree with that 100 uh, percent uh, living in East Texas and having the opportunities to visit so many of our clubs. And certainly where I live in Marshall, Texas, you know, there are lots of needs here. Um, but you know, uh, as the says around the the gear or the wheel, whichever you want to call it, it's for Rotary International. And so I think uh, I think we all as Rotarians have to 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 come to grips with how much are we going to do uh, internationally. Um, it might be a little. Uh, it might be some. Maybe it's a little more than that. Maybe you're getting you've done it and you've been a part of it. Uh, and for some of our clubs, it's quite a bit. Uh, we have a number of clubs that have invested a great deal of of their resources, their times, and their time, and, and have gone uh, to great lengths to support people in other other parts of the world. And so I know we have had Rotarians uh, in the last several years that have made trips to Mexico, to Africa, to uh, Guatemala, and I hope and pray that we continue to do that. Um, so my challenge to you is as you listen, uh, think about opportunities to get started. You know, if you're doing it, if you're doing international projects, you know, continue to build that reach and 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 uh, the amount of impact that your club's able to have. Uh, you know, if you're just getting started, uh, collaborate. I'm going to give some examples of some, some clubs this year that collaborated on some projects uh, internationally. And so, you know, and and I, I can't go without saying this: it doesn't matter how much money you have to put into it. Uh, certainly, we have to fund the project, but at the end of the day, they don't post a list and say. This club gave that much and this club gave this much. They just said these clubs joined together to do this good work. And so I think that's critically important. Um, and, you know, and I'd also add to that, it's a great way to attract new members. You know, if you visit clubs across our district, big cl clubs, certainly small clubs, rural clubs, um, you know, we're, we're looking for new members. There are a lot of people out there that are excited about the opportunity to do something uh, outside of, of where they live. And so I think if you'll if you'll uh, leverage that, I think you can it can certainly uh, get some people to to and if you publicize it uh, well, I think you can do that. And then finally, uh, you know, and this is what really drives me is it's a chance to make a difference. Uh, certainly, with people, if I have the opportunity to go to some of these places, I see what I do and what the dollars and and other things that I'm able to support and that we're able to do, I'm able to see those things. But there's there's always going to be uh, a large number of people that, um, you know, just don't have any, uh, I'll never see them and you may never see them and, but that's okay. So, all right, let's talk about what we've done uh, in 22 and 23, this, this past rotary year, uh, our district sponsored a global grant uh, in Las Guabas, Mexico. It's in the Northern uh, portion of Jalisco uh, territory or uh, state it's about 12 hours traveling distance uh, uh, north of Guadalajara. The last three hours uh, traveling there are on foot up into the mountains. Uh, a very remote group of people, uh, about 280, uh, all indigenous. And uh, this global grant supported the, uh, the materials and installation for uh, uh, 50 dry toilets. Uh, and you say, well, why is that? important, uh, certainly because if they are not uh, provided opportunities like that, uh, fecal matter ends up uh, getting into the water supply. Uh, they don't have water uh, you know, like we think of uh, out of the tap. 
And so it just creates a big problem. And this is going to be a game changer for that community. Uh, I did have the opportunity to go down to uh, Guadalajara back in January, met the club that was doing the work, and uh, it, they were really excited uh, because uh, they they were there to, to see the opportunity. Uh, but again, it, it's, it's much like building outhouses uh, that uh, allow for the, the waste to be uh, easily uh, down into the ground and, and things like that. And so uh, really, really a good one. It was a $72,000 uh, global grant. Um, our district uh, put, um, uh, I think, about ten thousand dollars into that. So, you know, a pretty pretty good chunk. Uh, but we had other districts that uh, joined in, and certainly the World Fund from the Rotary Foundation uh, matched matched that. Uh, district grants, club project grants that we did this past year. Uh, certainly, the the uh, the Longview Rotary Club did a did a very large one uh, down in the Tikal Paten region. Uh, we have a long history of, of uh, partnership with that, that group, but they helped refurbish and repair a fire watchtower, which is critically important. They live in a very forested region and, and fires uh, just really are not only a, a risk to people, but also to the economy. Uh, they, they purchased additional fire detection equipment and binoculars and things like that. Uh, and then uh, joined with the Mount Vernon Rotary Club uh, in the purchase of oral hygiene kits, uh, some prescription eyeglasses, and other supplies for children in the uh, Exocatan Paton uh, region in Guatemala. So again, a, a great example of Longview Club, Mount Vernon Club, two different size clubs, but joining together to do good. And again, uh, making quite an impact. Uh, the Marshall Rotary Club uh, actually took part in two as well. They did uh, they did a, 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 a club project grant to support 10 students uh, to the Annie T. Doe Memorial Foundation uh, Academy that's in uh, 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 Liberia over in, uh, I guess, the uh, I always get my geography right, but it's over in the uh, panhandle part, I guess, of, of uh, uh, the Gold Coast of Africa. And again, uh, we had the opportunity to see Catherine Mitchell uh, from the Texarkana International uh, Rotary Club. Uh, she is a part of that foundation, uh, came and delivered programs all over the district. And uh, there were a large number of, of clubs that helped to do that and individuals that just stepped forward. So, But that was a, a club project grant for us. And then uh, the Tyler Rotary Club and Marshall collaborated together to do a uh, to purchase an ophthalmic ultrasound machine uh, for uh, the uh, in this, the call region. Uh, Dr. Mary Quinn, many of you had the opportunity to meet her when she visited uh, a couple years back. But again, we've had a, a long standing relationship with that group. Uh, this this piece of equipment will allow her to uh, provide the testing necessary for people with uh, eye disease and, and, and injuries and things like that so that they don't have to travel eight hours by car over uh, pretty rough and, and uh, difficult uh, roads uh, one way. And so a huge difference maker, difference maker for, for, for those people. And, and it, it extends the, the relationship that we've had uh, to with, with them. So those were the international projects. I know uh, some that weren't club project grants. Uh, I mentioned that a number of clubs helped uh, with the Annie T. Doe, but uh, I want to mention also the Kilgore Rotary Club. Uh, their club project grant every year involves purchasing shoes uh, for their students uh, in, in Kilgore ISD, and uh, they uh, had a, a bunch of extra ones. And so uh, instead of just letting them sit around or waste, they, they made some calls and were able to get those shoes uh, shipped uh, into Mexico and delivered to an elementary school in Guadalajara, and they were distributed to special needs students. And uh, again, a huge impact. Uh, and and bright smiley faces on on moms uh, and and children alike uh, when their little kids were getting brand new pairs of shoes and so again uh, uh, congratulations to that club for stepping forward and doing that um, so again I, again great opportunities uh, this coming year uh, our district district fifty eight thirty will sponsor a, an, a, another global grant uh, this one is for mental health for youth down in Mexico City and actually it's going to be in co collaboration with the Rotary Club of Mexico City, which is, is pretty significant because um, 
Rotary, they, they were the first, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the first Rotary Club in the, in the country of Mexico. But um, this is a multi-layer training for indigenous adolescents, boys and girls uh, in Mexico City, the effort there to promote peace, uh, positive social development, and, and certainly to reduce violence. Uh, its uh, uh, cost is $121,000, so it's a bigger one, a bigger global grant, but uh, I think there'll be uh, a large number of folks that will, will come on board with that because uh, uh, mental health is a focus uh, for the 23-24 uh, uh, RI president, Gordon McAnally. Uh, he has really wanted to emphasize uh, Rotary engaging and helping people with mental health, and so... Uh, I'm excited about that. I know our, our DGE Karen is, is as well. So that's going to be exciting. Um, opportunities moving forward. Uh, again, these can be club project grants, you know, application dates coming fast and furious, but, um, you know, uh, these projects range in various sizes. Uh, I think I have them from uh, $150 up to uh, about $10,000. Uh, they can be done individually by a club. Uh, if a club wanted to do it by itself and didn't want to do a club project grant, they could do that. If they want to use their uh, available club project funds and put them, pool them together, uh, this is these are also projects where clubs could come together. Uh, much like Longview and Mount Vernon, Marshall and Tyler, uh, you know, great opportunities to join together and, and do good work. And, and there are some in here that I think would be very appealing and hopefully appealing to uh, maybe some of our smaller clubs that say, you know, we only have so much money and that and that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to just start with those. The first one for one hundred and fifty dollars, you can buy purchase a wheelchair. Uh, this wheelchair uh, through District 6110, which is uh, northwest Oklahoma and, and uh, excuse me, northeast Oklahoma and northwest Arkansas. Uh, a little bit of Missouri, a little bit of Kansas, but they have been doing this uh, for a long time. And uh, they are able to get the, the uh, wheelchairs uh, manufactured and shipped uh, down to Mexico to various locations. And they basically, have, every year, they, they collect all their money, they get all their wheelchairs, and they go down there and they do a, a, a distribution. But for $150 each, and my understanding is those would cost $500 if they were built in Mexico. So uh, pretty good savings. Uh, it's through the Springdale Rotary Club, uh, Springdale, Arkansas Rotary Club. So, uh, and and Shirley will have uh, some information that will have the contacts and the ways to uh, to reach these. But that would be a very simple project. There's also a, a, an organization called Mobility Worldwide. Um, they provide mobility carts, and they're used for all kinds of things. Certainly, moving people, uh, but also moving goods and things like that. Each of these carts costs three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, actually, the uh, the Marshall Rotary Club and the Henderson Rotary Club are joining together to do uh, through an organization called Azteca uh, to do um, some uh, some carts like this for their club project grant. But those are that's a pretty simple one uh, for a thousand dollars shelter box. Uh, you can buy one of those kits that, uh, you know, you can uh, certainly purchase that kit. And when uh, uh, when. Uh, you know, bad weather hits and, and uh, we have uh, some some disasters, uh, those can be deployed to help uh, people around the world. And so that would be an easy one. Uh, again, just a thousand dollars. Again, clubs could join together. Uh, all kinds of ways to do that. I mentioned the Annie T. Doe uh, Memorial Foundation in Liberia, again, sponsoring students. Uh, I don't think that's a, a one and done. I think we can do that again and again and again. And so, uh, again, each student is $300, uh, provides their education, clean food, uh, medical care, and uh, uh, some shelter. So uh, pretty pretty good uh, job there, uh, stretching those dollars. Um, there's another one. I had the summer, uh, opportunity last summer to go to Kenya, uh, to uh, outside of uh, Nairobi, and uh, there were... Uh, Rotarians there that we met, and they have a project to um, uh, help promote and, and provide uh, the irrigation and whatnot necessary for small quarter acre smart farms. Uh, they basically plant the whole farm and it's plant, planted in a variety of, of, of different vegetables and, and fruits and trees and things like that. For $1,500, you can support that. Uh, the, the, the results, uh, the produce that comes from those smart farms 
increases uh, the revenue for the uh, family tenfold, tenfold. So uh, instead of making, you know, 300 bucks, they make 3000. And that just goes a long, long way. Uh, provides, certainly provides food. Uh, if you keep up with the news, you know that Kenya right now is, is uh, experiencing a great deal of drought. So uh, the, the area where these smart farms are, are, could be located and are located uh, are, are right next to water wells that have already been built. So it's, it's primarily getting the water to the smart farms. But for 1500 bucks, you, you uh, can support one of those. Uh, I have some extra ones here that I would share with you that I think uh, certainly have uh, uh, value. Uh, the first one is in Puerto Vallarta, sir, uh, and it's the renovation and, and uh, AC, air conditioning, for the Community Education Center. Um, this is where students come and they get additional education free of charge, uh, certainly serves uh, marginalized communities, uh, but it gives these children an additional opportunity to learn in order to enhance their chance for better employment and towards breaking the cycle of poverty. Uh, that project is 4,300 US. Uh, so again, if it was a club project grant, you'd, you'd, you'd uh, have to have half and in, 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 in cash and then the rest in, in DDF from the district. Uh, there's one in Talakapaki Industrial. Uh, this is a club uh, that I've had the opportunity to work with before in a number of things, uh, but they are wanting to purchase uh, 30 laptop computer computers for library and facilities supporting 480 indigenous students. Uh, they'll also provide some lodging, food, medical, and extracurricular activities. This is a $10,000 project. And again, last two in these next few will be through Heart to Heart, uh, the Heart of America, the Heart of Mexico. So these are ones that uh, we've been uh, joining with uh, the last uh, five or six years, I guess. Um, let's see here, uh, Guadalajara Calamos, uh, this is a project, it's $6,500, but it's building a library in a hospital, uh, the Hospital Seville, uh, in the cancer center for children, in the Children's Cancer Center. Uh, the pa the pre previous club president passed away, uh, person, the individual's name was Robin, and they are uh, creating Robin's Library. And so the hospital has given them some space, and they're wanting to fill it out. And so these funds will be used for books, materials, and things like that. Uh, it's a pretty good, pretty solid project there. And then uh, the last one I have here is the Santiago uh, de la Manclava Club. It's a water purification system uh, in the public schools there. Uh, again, we have done a number of um, restroom renovations, water, for pur water purification projects over the years, but this would provide uh, maintenance and renovation to these systems so that the students have clean water uh, to go to the bathroom and things like that. Uh, that project is about $9,200. So again, uh, a, a wide variety of projects, uh, different price ranges, uh, but all very, very uh, vital uh, to helping other people. So if you are interested in any of those, um, and you look on the list that, that Shirley will be able to, to, to share with you. Uh, please feel free to either contact the information that's there or contact me personally. Uh, and um, I will be uh, very, very pleased to, to work with you. Um, if you're interested in collaborating, uh, you know, even today, uh, if there are clubs that at uh, some point before you leave today have the opportunity to discuss, hey, let's do something together, uh, do that. And let's figure out how to make that work. So uh, again, it's my pleasure to talk about international service. And I would just encourage you to continue to do great things and look at the opportunities you have to make a difference and, and, and make this world a better place for, for everyone. So thank you very much. My pleasure.